here. And we're going to start doing some division problems. And you're going to see that these signs here that we've kind of been using apply to division the same as they apply to multiplication. All right, so let's start this out by doing something like, like with numbers 80 divided by negative 20. Uh, you might look at that and you might say, well, isn't this a fraction? And I would say, yes, it is a fraction. But fractions are basically division. So I could write this as 80 over negative 20, or I could write this as 80 divided by negative 20, um, or I could write this as 80 divided by negative 20. Sometimes you see it with a slash. It's all the same thing. It's ta you're taking the top number and you're dividing by the bottom number. In this case, the bottom number is negative. So what we have here is exactly the same rules here. Positive divided by negative. That's going to fall in this bucket. When the signs are different, the answer is always going to be negative. So what is the answer? Uh, since I have a positive divided by a negative, I can just write that negative sign right there. 80 divided by 20 is 4 because 8 divided by 2 is basically 4. So the answer is negative 4. All right, let's go on and do another one. Let's say we have negative 160 divided by 40. Well, I have a negative divided by a positive, so the signs are different. That means I'm always going to have a negative answer. I don't have to look at anything else. 160 divided by 40, when you do that division, is going to be 4. So the answer is negative 4. Now let's uh, do things, a little, it's not really complicated, but let's take a look. 8 minus 12 over negative 2. Believe it or not, this kind of problem confuses a lot of students because they don't know what to do. Should they take 8 and divide it by 2? Or should they take 12 and divide by 2? Or should they do the subtraction on the top? What should they do first? This comes down to order of operations. When you see something added or subtracted on the top or a bottom of a fraction, you kind of pretend that there's parentheses around it. You don't see any parentheses here, but the fact that it's on top of a fraction or if it were on the bottom, if it were on the bottom of the fraction, it means it's grouped together and you have to do it first. So you kind of envision a kind of a pretend parentheses there. So if I drew the parentheses, you know I have to do it first. So let's do the top first, 8 minus 12. And from, from the previous section, we've done those kinds of problems enough. You should know that that's going to be negative 4. And if you really want to think about it, you start at 8 on the number line. You go on 12 units backwards. You're going to hit 0, and then you've got 4 more units to go in the negative area. So you're going to get a negative 4 on the top. And on the bottom, it's still a negative 2. So here I have a negative divided by a negative. The signs are the same, right? So that means I have a positive answer. What's 4 divided by 2 is 2. So the answer there is positive 2. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to do a substitution problem again. Let's say x is equal to negative 2, y is equal to 3, z is equal to 4, something called t is equal to 5, and let's say w is negative 18. So I've got lots of letters, five letters here, different values, but by now you should realize it's not a big deal. All you do is substitute them in. And we're going to be focusing on division here, so let's say we have y times z divided by x. You know, this might terrify you before watching this lesson, but now you'll know it's very easy. You just take and substitute in. y is 3, z is 4, and x is negative 2. So there you go. Now what do you do? Well, you've got these things on the top here, so let's do that first. When you have things going on in the top or in the bottom of the fraction, you need to handle those first. 3 times 4 is 12. And on the bottom, you have negative 2. Now what do you do? Well, you divide them. What's 12 divided by 2? Well, that's 6. What sign is it? These guys are different signs, just like up here. So you always get a negative. That's going to be negative 6. Very simple. You just have to take it one step at a time. Let's say you have z plus w over x. Now we substitute in. z is 4 plus w is negative 18. That's all on the top of the fraction. On the bottom is negative 2. So what do we do? What do we tackle first? Well, these are, these are added together. We have to do this first. You kind of pretend, as I said before, that there's sort of like an invisible parenthesis here. When they you know, have things added together on the top of a fraction, we need to handle it first. What's 4 plus a negative 18? Well, looking back to the last section, because these are different signs, positive and negative, we kind of ignore the signs and subtract. 18 minus 4 
is going to give you 14. So we're going to put a 14 on top here. The sign takes the sign of the bigger number. In this case, is that one. So we have a negative here. This guy stays on the bottom. Now, what is 14 divided by 2? It's 7, and since we have negative divided by negative, it's going to be positive 7. And that just comes from our first rule up here, positive 7. Let's do a couple more. Let's say we have t times w divided by y. t divided by w, I'm sorry, t times w divided by y. t is 5, we get that from there. w is negative 18, we get that from there, divided by y. y is 3. Okay, so what we have is, again, something going on at the top. Let's do that first. What's 5 multiplied by negative 18? Well, when you take 5 multiplied by negative 18, you could get a large number, and then you would have something on the bottom that you could divide, but there's a simpler way, because notice, you know, kind of goes back to simplifying fractions. We've got things multiplied on the top, and we've got things on the bottom. We can divide the top and bottom of this fraction to simplify it even before we multiply uh, if we'd like to. So let's divide top and bottom by 3. 3 divided by 3 is 1. 18 divided by 3 is 6. Now notice there's still a negative there. Okay, so when I simplify this, what I'll have on the top is 5 times negative 6, and on the bottom I'll have 1. Now I want to stress that I could have done 5 times negative 18, got a big number on top, and then 3 on the bottom, and then I could have simplified the answer. That would have been correct. But you can also do the simple, but that would lead to, you know, that would lead to large numbers on the top that I wouldn't really want to deal with. So I can simplify it ahead of time by dividing top and bottom by 3. And we've done that kind of stuff when we did simplifying fractions. So now what we're left with is 5 times negative 6. What's 5 times 6 on the top? 30. And since these are different signs, it's going to be negative 30. And since it's divided by 1, it doesn't even really matter. Anything divided by 1 is, is itself. So what we have is negative 30 there. All right, so for our next problem, we have x plus z over y plus 1. And again, we just substitute in x is negative 2 plus z is 4 over y is 3 plus 1. So again, when you see something like this, something added, you know, addition on the top, you kind of have invisible parentheses here. And you kind of have invisible parentheses around the bottom because these guys are added together. So basically, you do the top and the bottom separately, and then you deal with the end. So here you have negative 2 plus 4. The signs are different, negative and positive. So you ignore the signs and you subtract. 4 minus 2 is 2. And you take the sign of the larger number. So in that case, it's positive. And 3 plus 1 is very simple. That's just 4. So what you have is 2 divided by 4. 2 divided by 4, you should remind yourself that that's basically able to be simplified. I can divide the top by 2 and divide by the bottom also by 2. So 2 divided by 2 is 1. 4 divided by 2 is 2, so the answer is 1 half. And this is the final answer of this problem. Now let's go and do another one very similar to it. Let's say we have x times t times z divided by y plus 1. Now let's see what this is equal to. On the top we'll have x, which is negative 2, multiplied by t, which is 5, multiplied by z, which is 4, and on the bottom we'll have y, which is 3, plus 1. Very similar problem uh, with one difference. We have the variable t involved. So let's go and deal with the top and bottom here. So what we have on the top, what's negative 2 times 5? 2 times 5 is 10. And the sign between these guys, since they're different, is going to be negative. So we have negative 10. We still need to multiply by the 4. On the bottom, 3 plus 1, we can easily just write as 4. So notice we multiplied this and we got that. Here, 10 times 4 is 40. These are different signs, so we take a negative, and we have a 4 there. And then finally, we do this division. 40 divided by 4 is going to give me 10, and since they're different signs, we have a negative there. So the answer is negative 10. All right, now for the final problem of this roundup, we have wz minus x times y over x plus y. All right, so we have w, which is negative 18, z, which is 4, minus x, which is negative 2,
times y, which is 3. And we're dividing it all by x plus y. So negative 2 plus 3. All right, so it's just an exercise in doing everything one step at a time. So on the top of this guy, we have a lot of things going on. But what we have mostly going on is this multiplication here and then a multiplication here. And then whatever we get for answers, we're going to subtract them in the end. There's many ways you can do this problem. Let's On the top, let's just focus on the easiest thing to do, 2 times 3, first of all. So on the top, let's not mess with this large multiplication until a little bit later when we have to. Here we're subtracting, what is negative 2 times 3? It's going to give you negative 6. Because 2 times 3 is 6, these signs are different, so we have a negative 6. Everything else is just a repeat of what we have written. On the bottom, negative 2 plus 3, we can add these together using what we learned in the last section, and what we're going to get is a positive 1. Because we have different signs, negative and positive, so we ignore them, and we subtract. 3 minus 2 is 1, and it takes the sign of the larger absolute value. So it takes the positive sign. Now next, what we notice is that we have a negative, double negative here. So what we're going to do is add the opposite. And so ultimately, what we really have when you really want to look at the, at the end of the day, is negative 18 times 4. And then we have plus 6. And on the bottom, we're just dividing by 1, so we don't even need to write it because anything divided by 1 just kind of disappears. So what we need to do is solve this problem here. What is 18 times 4? I should say negative 18 times 4. 18 times 4 is 72. And since these are different signs, you're going to have a negative sign there and then you're adding 6. So you have negative 72 plus 6. So since these are different signs, you ignore this guy, you subtract 72, uh, you subtract the 6 from it, you're going to get 66, and it takes the sign of the larger absolute value, which is negative. So the answer is negative 66, and that is the final answer. So that is really all I have in this section. And I think you can see that even if you're struggling, even if you're still learning, I think you can see that there's really uh, less to multiplication and dividing uh, real numbers than there is to when you add and subtract them. You know, when you add and subtract them, sometimes you have to look at the absolute value, and this, determining the sign is a little bit more involved as far as, you know, thinking about it, right? Here it's much, much easier. If both of the signs uh, are positive, the answer is positive. If both of them are negative, it's negative. If they're different, no matter how the ordering, it's always negative. So the easiest way to remember is if you have the same signs, okay, for the two things you're multiplying together, no matter if they're positive, positive, or negative, negative, if you have the same signs, you always get a positive result. If you have different signs, you always get a negative result. The rest of the problems we're doing, building up to these complicated looking problems, that's more to flex your muscles and give you practice than anything else. The basic idea is what's written up here. So make sure you can go back, make sure you can solve every single problem in the section, that nothing is a mystery. Make sure after that that you go and solve more problems from whatever textbook you're using. Or you can also go into my companion worksheets and solve the extra problems that were given in the companion worksheets for this course, okay, for this lesson. And make sure you understand it because as we go on in algebra, adding and subtracting and multiplying and dividing numbers are really the foundational building blocks of everything else. A lot of students don't quite get it, they gloss over it, and then they have a lot of trouble later. And there's really no reason because if you understand this, get comfortable with it, practice, 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 then as you go farther in algebra, it's not going to be a big deal. Everything else that follows is not going to be a big deal once you understand this foundational bedrock material.